Oh, all right. I got a notification here. Nice. Looks like one a little bit earlier than that today. Nice, I'm going to go check out the adventure frequency and see if anybody is still out there. All my amateur radio operators, my shortwave listeners, my scanner enthusiasts, particularly you, listen up. There is a new device that just dropped today. It's called the Boondock Echo. It's been talked about multiple times on Hackaday. It allows us the capability of basically any radio that you can interface into it, provide audio into it, for it not only to record, but to do novel things like AI processing. Yeah, I know. Don't d d Calm down. Calm down. Don't get excited yet. AI processing in the sense that if you give it some key words, it will listen for those words and then notify you via a myriad of ways to let you know of what's going on over the air. Let's go over to the workbench. I'll show you the device. I'll show you how to interface with it via your PC or your phone. Let's go check it out. All right, here's the boondock. I have it fed with a USB micro connection. This is a first gen model and this is kind of a testing unit. If you go on the website, you can see there's some iterations they've gone through as far as the device is concerned. You just plug in power and it starts working. It does need a micro SD card to pull uh, some audio files and some other things. I found out after playing around with this and learning more about it that you do want to use the SD card it comes with, but if you run into problems, it'll actually download the audio that it needs to this. So the first time you initialize it, it's pretty much plug and play, at least that's the design of it. There is multiple ways for you to configure Wi-Fi with this, whether you're a Windows user, Linux, whatever it is. And you can just also use your phone, which is pretty nice. So around the box, it's pretty simple. There is a Baofeng plug, the Kenwood connector for the, tool, the, the dual tip ring ring sleeve connector. And that was kind of, I think, the original intention of the device is that you would connect a Baofeng to it, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, I have good word that even though you know you, this is there, future editions may not have this. They're gonna go to just the tip ring sleeve, which is uh, what I use anyway into my scanner and into my VHF, UHF uh, radio. There is a switch on the side. That's a kind of a PTT lockout because this kind of works as an intercom system when you have it connected to the radio. And on the side here, power comes in the form of a USB micro. Click it in there. And once you have Wi-Fi connected, it'll be able to do the different things that the device does. What's interesting is that a lot of this can be done locally with your phone. So if you're on the same network, that's largely what you need for getting some of the recordings off of it. And obviously, if you want that AI capability, which I'm going to show here shortly, you will need to have an internet connection to make that possible. And trust me, you probably want to do that. Anyway, around the front, you have a reset button, receive noise button, which is just booting up your PTT, your play next and previous, and then your volume control. The only downside, sometimes the HT radio speaker is going to be a bit better depending on which radio you have connected to it. To be honest, I'm seldom monitoring the speaker and I'm mainly using it for the record capability out of my scanner. Or if I have it connected to a VHF UHF radio, what's going on in the adventure frequency or the 520 frequency for monitoring national simplex. For a frame of reference, I've been using the Boondock Echo for a couple of months now, primarily to interface with my SDS-200 scanner. I have loaded in a number of keywords that my wife has asked for, and in addition to myself notifying me via email, it also notifies her via email, telling her of what's going on in and around our city and whatever my scanner's picking up. This has been really helpful for her as she's an active member of our community watch, neighborhood watch system that she can then post to Facebook or wherever she posts these audio clips that come to her directly via email. Very nice. Let's take a little bit of a look at the advertised specs of the device and then I'll show you the really cool features that are available for accessing the boondock directly. So over at crowdsupply.com, there will be a link in the description. You will find the Boondock Echo. This is currently under crowdsource, so you can go ahead and purchase it that way if you're interested. A couple of notes on the use cases, off outdoors and off grid, emergency services, which is kind of what I'm using it for, is for the scanning, copying, and receiving capability. And then if you are an amateur radio operator, obviously listening to the different things that are on the air. What's really cool, so here's your hardware, but take a look at this. So 
I literally, <laughs> if you saw my video on the Argent Data ADS SR1, which is a simplex repeater, you would connect that to your, you know, your radio or whatever, and it can do some simple recording capability and replay. And they go through voice recorder, repeater control, all that stuff, and then compare it to what the Boondock Echo does. So recording time, 260 hours, depending on what your level of setup is. It'll do on-device playback, internet connectivity, online playback, transcription. Yes, it does transcription. Push to talk, keyword detection, email notification, and you can even do if this, then that integration, which means you could hypothetically with an if this, then that integration have like a Twitter account or a YouTube account that posts the link to the audio or something along those lines in the future. Keep in mind that this is an actively produced and developed device. So there's firmware updates that are coming out, I believe, on the daily. I usually will use whatever is the current stable build, and I've updated the firmware like three or four times as I've been playing around with it. Now, do keep in mind that this is a service that they're providing as well as the hardware that you buy because there's a lot of audio and processing that has to go on if you're going to make something available on the cloud. So depending on what you want to do, it will do seven days of cloud storage. The on-device audio storage is 260 hours, so that's just on the device. You can capture all that and get into that locally, and you can go through a number of different things. There may be ads. If you pay a bit more, you can get off the free plan and get into that as well. But um, there's a number of things. I'll let you guys go check it out as you pull it up because you can see there's a whole lot depending on what services you want to use. But for a lot of you, the free is going to be where it's at. Anyway, let's take a look at what this can do when you connect to it. So here's my homepage for the Boondock. And I have been experimenting with a lot of stuff, so I'm going to jump ahead to a couple of different audio samples, and we're going to test it out that way. So this is connected to my VHF, UHF radio at home. Fire something they're waiting on, a micro node, I don't know. But it is up and running and fun. So that was a quick one. Uh, you can adjust how long the recording goes for, and there's a ring buffer inside of it that's kind of always monitoring, and there's always active recordings going on. So you can set how long or how short you want those clips. This was just quick, rapid-fire recordings that I was doing. Check it out for you. Well, it's <laughs> not serious. It is. Now, the audio quality, that's related to the receive side of my radio, not the Boondock Echo. But you can still hear what they're saying, and the transcription is pretty good. So about the same time of week here. That's the same person having a rag chew, apparently. But let's go ahead. You can see I have 4,000 pages of audio recordings. So just going through a couple one of these here, you've got this guy. Charlie, Alpha, Foxtrot, come back with your full signal. Let me see if I got that. Echo 6, Charlie, Echo, Foxtrot, QSO. Yeah, so pretty good audio recording. And, and remember, it's just going to create clips of whatever it's hearing. So if you're on a repeater, for instance, and you want to record a net or something along those lines, you can create all kinds of these different clips and use them in different capacities. If I wanted to, I can go in here and I can download it. I could reduce the playback speed, do all kinds of fun stuff. Under received, you're going to see everything that you've pulled up in the recent time that you've had it going. If you go to sent, you're going to see a list of this is all the things that you've transmitted or uh, have been picked up on a radio that's connected to the unit. So if you're like me, mainly use this for listening or catching up on what's been going on in the bands or be notified, then this may not be that active for you. And then favoriting is if you've got some you know, actual recordings that you saved. Let's dive a little bit deeper, go to my dock. So this is my boondock. And I have it just set up saying that I'm monitoring as KI6NAZ 146.580, which is the adventure frequency. If you hit settings, though, we'll go into that. And this is where you'd set your call sign and what the device is. You could have the speaker on or off. You could set the speaker volume to max volume, record audio. This is the level of sensitivity. I've found that when I'm connected to my scanner, I just turn the volume up. Under more settings, though, see, now this is where you can kind of go in and adapt the recording capability. You can set a minimum size of your clips, but also a maximum size. And again, if you have, you know, the 200-something uh, hours of recording, you can bump this up to be a 124-second recording if you wanted to, or max that out to the maximum of 180, which is probably the size of the ring buffer. And then that way you could have these clips broken up and use them however you want to use. You could upload them if you want to, the recordings. Your player settings are the same as well, the speaker, the transmit, audio, notifications, and whatnot. Now, for reasons, I have uh, my lat long turned off, but you can go ahead and adjust that if you want. Wi-Fi network, this is where you would set your SSID and password for the network that you're on. 
Now, under my doc packs, this is something I haven't dipped into. I believe this is still under some amount of development, but they'll add uh, different capabilities if you have different boondocks and whatnot that you want to link together. Scheduler would be for scheduled recording. So if I knew that there was a net that was going to be on at a certain time and I was on that frequency, or you are listening to a repeater and whatnot, and you wanted to capture a particular type of audio at a certain time, this is where you would set that. Click create, and there you go. You can say, okay, I'm going to use the Josh Doc daily, sure, or weekly, whatever, and then set more details about what you're trying to record. Now, my favorite thing about the Boondock Echo is the monitor. So if you click on monitor here and go up to the top where it says manage, under manage, I have, I have two alerts that are set. Uh, one is listening for the words ICOM, Yesu, Antenna, or Summits, those first three that was for my testing, but summits, oddly enough, a really good thing to be listening to on 146.580, particularly here in Southern California, the adventure frequency. I got notifications and emails at josh at hamtactical.com. Uh, yes, that's my podcast email. If you'd like to email the podcast, make sure you send it to Leia at hamtactical.com and josh at hamtactical.com for the Ham Radio Crash Course podcast. But I was getting live notifications in and around home and work where I can easily hit most of the South Bay and all along the Angeles National Forest and the San Gabriels, pretty much from wherever I was at from my mobile radio. So I was always kind of notified when there was any activity going on and I was in at my desk at work or doing something that probably needed a break to run outside and do some ham radio. But the interesting one that I uh, added for my wife, these are a number of police codes and you can make these anything you want and you can just keep adding more and more of them as you need and then just set them to active or inactive. Uh, in this case though, this one worked out really well with the scanner, which I'll show you for picking up traffic that was going on in and around my town. So if you go back to keyword alerts, so you can see I was doing some testing. We've been playing around with some different stuff. And you can see I've got pages and pages of these. Uh, but check this out. Here's one of them. Roger that. Did his antenna change or what caused that? Here's another guy doing summits on the air. Oh, last call. CQ, CQ for summits on the air, November 6th. <laughs> pretty pretty cool. So if we keep going back here, now we get into when I have the uh, the codes going for the scanner. Hi, Hunter. I'll be tapping to warm out for 647F. Show me Route 19 for booking. And uh, as you may not be aware, that audio quality is because of P25 audio. It's not because of the Boondock Echo. Members, this is a no water broadcast. Good night today is Captain Kovac flash shift on the fire service. All members, call him at the station any time tonight to wish him a farewell. This concludes your NOLA broadcast. Looks like Captain Kovacs signing off. Engine 14, fire alarm 3413, West Pacific Avenue, Ontario Street, Hollywood Way, Red One, break, engine 36. For and it looks like they have a bit of work here on the website that they're working on. Uh, I also have this shrink down considerably because we're doing a, a live video so you can see it big enough. But uh, if we get a little bit closer, here's this one. A uh, weapon used was a rifle type firearm, unknown caliber, and there was no property obtained from the victim. If there no questions for 136, ever you drop the patch. Any questions? Yeah, so again, I had the buffer set to a little bit smaller in size, just as uh, getting lots of examples, but more. Uh, for you, Miss Air, putting out a code for, code for, one to team, the vehicle's clear, third rising southbound five north of Booker's code. So if you start thinking, you know, as you're watching this, like, what could I use this on? What could I, you know, what are the capabilities that would be most useful? Uh, definitely scanner, guys. This is, like, right up your alley, I think. 29, battalion 16, structure fire, 29, And here you go. Engine 36, fire alarm at Longfellow School, 1065 East Washington Boulevard, Catalina Avenue, Wilson Avenue, Red One, break. Engine 5, go ahead. Yeah, pretty cool. Because Engine 5 last up three hours. Detail. Engine 105. Yeah, it, it's absolutely amazing what you can do with this as far as, like, the local recording usefulness and capabilities. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu test, fire. <laughs> and that was my first test with the boondock. Literally the next day we started picking up these uh, 
cool is a relative term, but definitely interesting things that are going in and on and around in my neighborhood. Uh, yeah, so make sure you go check out the website. The link is in the video description if you're interested. It's a very novel tool, and there's also some links to Hackaday and a number of people who have checked it out there. So make sure to go follow the links in the video description. Thank you. I find the Boondock Echo a fantastic tool to fold into your amateur radio, shortwave listening, or scanner monitoring lifestyle. There will be a link in the description that will take you to the website to check it out. I am not an affiliate, but they did send me this device to use in a trial type of situation so that I could actually use it to get some audio clips and find out if it's useful or not. And I think this is exactly what a lot of you are looking for. If you're busy like I am, bustling and running around all the time between work and taking the kids to different classes, and not having exactly the best experience with Ham Alert. Ham Alert's great, but... I really like the customizable features that I can add to the Boondock Echo that make it really, really useful and helpful for whatever you're interested in doing. Sound off below in the comments what you think about the Boondock Echo, and I will talk to you soon. I'm going to have the creators on to talk about the device and really get those advanced features out of it. So if you do end up picking one of these up, make sure you click the bell and subscribe so that you get notified when we go live again with them. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. Thanks so much for watching. 73.